Okay, so first up is the tabs interaction. Probably the most common, most used, most flexible interaction type out there. Uh, that's because they're just a fantastic way to organize and group related content so learners can explore material without having to leave the current slide. So just a really great way to create more pull-based courses without having to send learners off to different slides or uh, loading additional pages each time they want to view some related content. So what do they look like? Well, they can be literal, like this example here. So in this example, these tabs kind of resemble real-world folder tabs. And as we click each one, we, we see that different content's loaded. The content obviously is related to the label. And you also see we have a, a selected state here that's different than the other tabs. So this is something that Storyline makes really easy as well. Just helps indicate what the current tab or button selection is. And of course, when we go through each of these, we can see the different content. So that's one example of a tabs interaction. Let's take a look at another. And this one right here. So this one is a little bit more of a minimalist design. So the tabs are really just sort of buttons. And so they act the same. And they have the current you know, selection state here for each tab. So it shows you which tab you're on, which button tab you're on. And as we click each one, we load additional content. So this is really easy to do in Storyline. And one of the benefits to tabs interactions in Storyline is that they really encompass all of the uh, core building blocks of interactivity, the states, the layers, and the triggers. So uh, when you can build the tabs interaction, you have a, should have a pretty good idea for Storyline's workflow. So let's jump in and take a look at how to build one real quick. So I'll just start here on this uh, ba basic practice slide. And we'll try to recreate the one we just saw up here, right, with the uh, the basic tabs on the bottom, just the four tabs with some content that's loaded. So the first thing I want to do is just lay down uh, some rectangles. We'll use those as our shapes, as our buttons. So we go up to the Insert tab, Shape, and I'll just grab the regular rectangle, click once on the slide, and I can kind of move this up a little bit. And with that selected, I'm just going to type in Button 1. And what I'll do now is just... I'm position it down here on the bottom, control C, control V to paste it. And I can change this label to two. Another way to duplicate would be to hold down the control key and then click and drag. So that's another way to do it. And then I can do also a control D, whichever's faster, just knowing that there's a couple ways that you can do that. Now, I don't really have these spread out as, as why they're not really filling up the entire bottom of the slide. So one thing I can do, and this is just more of a alignment tip uh, production tip is to select all, control G to group them, and then with it grouped, I can stretch them out and align it over here on the edge, control shift G to ungroup, and they're going to be nicely spaced right there. If I wanted to do something more and, you know, tighten them up a little bit, I could also do that. Maybe I'll move it right above that bottom bar right there. So I have one, two, three, I need to rename this one, button three, and then I'll type in here, button four. So if I look down here in the states, in the timeline, you can see that each of the rectangles is named. Probably makes sense to name each of these just to make it easier for us to find each of those. So I'm just going to go through each one, double click in the timeline. I'll just paste the name right there and then change the last digit. So button three and then button four. Benefit here of using the common prefix for each of these button names is that it'll make it really easy for me to identify if I'm working with a lot of objects and triggers. So all of my buttons begin with the name button, right? So that makes it kind of easy to find them. Not such a big deal here because we're only working with these four objects, but if I had a lot more on the slide, that would be a good case to, uh, to do it. All right, so if I look in each button, right, I want to add some states here to show the hover state, right? Just to give that visual feedback to the learner that, hey, this is an active button. This is something active that you can click. And then also a selected state. Selected state says, uh, this is the currently active state, which gives that visual change uh, compared to the other buttons to show that this is the one that we're currently looking at. So come over here to the states tab right here, click inside there, and you can see by default we have a normal state for uh, the button. I'm going to click edit states, and I want to create a new state. So click the new state icon, and then over here, I'm going to drop down. And you can see that Storyline has some built-in states, right? The hover, down, visited, selected. And then there's some specific drag and drop uh, options right there. But what we want to work with is the built-in hover state and then the built-in selected state. So these have some built-in superpowers right there. When you mouse over them, the hover state's automatically going to know to 
uh, change the state, so you don't need a trigger for that. And it's also going to uh, change the mouse cursor, the hand cursor, uh, the mouse cursor to the hand cursor so that you can indicate that, hey, this is a clickable object. So Storyline is going to do all that for us. We don't need any special um, triggers or any other programming to make that happen. These buttons have their own superpowers. So I click Hover and I click Add. And by default, it's going to look just like the uh, normal state. So we want to change the way that works. And we do that by formatting it. And so maybe I'll go a little bit lighter in the fill color for the hover state. And so that would be okay. And I think this is this one should be showing us that it's the button state there. Yeah. Make that our default, the lighter state. And then I'll also use a selected state. So I'm also going to select one of the built-ins. This time I'll just choose it right there. Also another production tip though, this might make it faster as you start to get more familiar with it. I don't have to select it with the cursor with the drop down menu. Selected, I can just start typing S E and then you see how Storyline automatically fills that in for us. So that's a little bit faster, especially if you are um, trying to get out of work a little bit faster and you don't want to spend a lot of extra time. Learning those shortcuts like that makes a big difference because uh, you spend less time uh, editing and doing the repetitive work that uh, is so common in e-learning. Click add. I'm going to make my selected state a darker color, right? So that's going to be the active one. And then we have normal, which is medium. Hover will be lighter and then selected right there. So click done. Now, rather than going through and um, manually adding the same states to the other buttons, I can use another production tip. Uh, and that's the format painter to take all the properties of this, this button that we just created and then quickly paint those formats, uh, format paint those options onto the other buttons. So here's what it looks like. I'm going to select the first one that we did that has the states the way we like. Come all the way up here to the home tab, select the format painter. Actually, what I should do is double click it. If I double click it, then it's going to be persistent. And then you see how um, this cursor has changed now to the paintbrush tool right next to my cursor. I can just click each of these buttons now and you see how the uh, states got updated for button two. I click button three, those got updated. And then finally button four is updated and I can click escape to remove that format painter. Super fast way to make that work. Now I have four buttons, each with the hover and selected state. Now I wanna show you something real quick. If I preview this slide, it's gonna work, at least the, the states will work, but there's gonna be one thing that doesn't work the way we want. So if I click, right, there's the hovers, if I click one of them, you see how it's dark? That's showing me correctly that that's the selected state. If I click the next one, that's also selected. Well, we're not gonna show both of this content, both of these content slides at the same time, right? If I click the other one, they're all showing selected. If I click it again, it's gonna deselect it. So that's the normal behavior. You click it once to select it, you click it again to deselect it. What we would like to see, what gives this tabs type uh, functionality is to have a toggle effect where only one of these buttons is showing a selected state. That's what we want for the tabs because if we're loading additional content here, then only one of these can be selected at one time. And I also just noticed that these are not horizontally spaced. So format and distribute the widths. So what I wanna do is I wanna select all four of these buttons, just a, um, a drag a selection around them, right click anywhere on the outside of the button. So you see the cursor here on the edge, don't click on the inside, but you wanna click when you get that four arrow uh, cursor. And then from there, I'm just gonna choose button set from the drop down menu and I'll choose button set one. So button set one means just create a new button set. If you had a bunch of these on the slide, you could create more, but honestly, you're just usually working with just one on a slide. So I click button set one. And nothing visually is going to change here. Just wanna make sure I got that selection button set one. Now when I preview the slide, check this out. That button two is showing selected. If I come over here and select button four, notice how button four shows a selected state, but button two now shows back to the normal state. So only one of these buttons is going to act as a currently active or selected button. That's exactly what we, exactly what we want for tabs interaction. So that's a really cool feature in Storyline. We put that in the right click menu, but you do not need to use a bunch of triggers to go and turn the visibility of all the other objects off when you turn one on. Storyline's gonna do that 
just behind the scenes for you if you if you assign everything to a button set. Cool. So we've worked with our states, right? Each object has its states. We have our graphics here. Now let's work with the layers. The layers is where we're going to put the content for each of these buttons. And I'm not going to get too fancy with this, but I'm just going to create a new layer. So the new layer icon, and we'll call this one button one. And the button one layer could be anything. It could be called content 01, if that makes more sense for uh, the button. But the 01 that we're using here is going to tie into the button uh, one on the timeline that we're using. So you also notice right here, if I come back in the timeline, we have a full timeline just like we do on the base layer. So this is really cool. It's basically a slide that sits above the default base slide. So we can do timelines and everything else pretty much that we can do on the base layer, but we have a new layer above it. And so this basically acts like a slide that's hidden above the bottom layer. And this is how we can add additional content, but not have to create additional slides each time. So this is another one of those workflow features and storylines, just different than other tools. So just to make this easy, I'll put in a uh, text box. Heading goes here. And let's do heading 01, because heading 01 will be for the button 01. And I'm going to change that to a heading. I'm not going to worry about slide uh, layouts or anything like that. And then let's add a content library picture. Office. I'll grab the first one up here and I'll just go through. All right. Nothing super fancy. You design this the same way, any way, custom way that you want. But this is a slide now that resides above the back, the basic uh, base layer slide. And it will never appear until we tell it to appear. So I have content one for the button one. And what I want to do is duplicate it. By duplicating it, I'm going to keep everything pretty much in place. And then I can just make a couple changes. So duplicate it. You can see it takes the same name. And this time I'll just call this one content02. And I can replace this image from content library. So select the image, choose change picture, content library. The office photos should still stay up. I'll just go through these in order. And that should update. There we go. And I'll change the text right there to heading two. So the way we talk about this in Storyline is you make something great and then you duplicate. And what we're doing right here, we'll rename this one to Content03. Change this graphic out. Content library. Content library sure does make this easy without having to manage a bunch of local assets. Obviously, if you're doing something more custom, you're going to have your own graphics on your, on your drive, so you'll work with those. But uh, for this quick tutorial demo, workshop, webinar, this is a lot easier. So Content 04, change that 3 to 4, and then we'll get crazy and add one more picture. All right, so we are essentially two-thirds done with our button. If I jump back down here to the bottom, to the practice base layer, what we've done is we've added four buttons to the base layer. Each one of these buttons has a hover state and a selected state. And then next step, we added the content layers for each button. So this is where we'll, we'll link to for each button. And to link to each of those is what we use uh, triggers for. And triggers are essentially the actions that tell Storyline what to do. So pretty much nothing happens in Storyline unless it's got a trigger. So we have our buttons, we have our layers. All that's left is to select each button and then tell it what tell Storyline what to do when that button is clicked. So if I come over here to the triggers panel, I want to create a new trigger, right? And the trigger always begins with the action. So the action being what is it I want to do and when do I want to do it? So what do I want to do? I want to show a layer. And because we've already created all four layers, I now have access to those here in this drop down layer menu. Select content one, when user clicks button one. And if I'd accidentally didn't have anything selected or I didn't have the right button, you can see as I move over these in the, uh, the triggers wizard, um, I can highlight and find other objects quickly, but see how the buttons are nicely organized by the prefix button. This is what I mean by it really is a lot easier to keep the uh, common prefix for each object. But button one is what I want, select it, no conditions necessary, click OK. And now in the triggers panel, 
we have our first option. Here's a pro tip. I've already created one trigger. I've got three more to create. I can just copy this. So if I right click the trigger and choose copy, I can then drag a selection around the remaining three buttons, but that's selected. I can click the paste icon right here. So I'm gonna paste the copy trigger to the selected objects. And look at that, everything gets a new trigger. Now it did copy the same trigger, right? So the, the show later one, show content one is the same for all of these, <laughs> but check this out. Button two, I just have to click this little hyperlink option right here and then change that to content two. So now that's the new layer it's gonna show. Button three, will show it to content three and then layer four, content button four is gonna show content layer four. Big production workflow tip when you want to work as efficiently as possible. Let's take a look and preview our slide. All right, so here we go. Four buttons, click the first one. There's my heading one. The button selected state is showing. Doesn't matter which order I go into. Now I'm showing heading three, four button three, and then of course content three, button two, and so on. So that's really huge. Even though this is a very simple example, this workflow using the states, the triggers, and the layers is what you're gonna do for the simplest projects in Storyline as well as the most complex. The complexity happens when you start to add additional uh, triggers and conditions and additional combinations of uh, the triggers with the content objects and the state changes. So tabs interaction, probably one of the most common used interactions because they're super flexible. They don't have to always look like tabs. They can look like note cards. So in this case, this example right here, I'll preview it, is exactly the same thing. All right, we click each one of these. There's our character and so on, right? So essentially that's a tab interaction. You could call it a note card interaction, but uh, the note cards are really acting like tabs. We still have a selected state for each one and we only show one piece of uh, related content at a time. And then again, things like checklist interactions, similar, right? You could call it a checklist, but it's really just a, a, a another subcategory of a tabs because we're showing these one by one. And of course, the difference being is that we're actually using a different type of state in this one, which is called a visited state. So I'll take a look at that real quick just to show you what the difference is. So if I open up one of these, click states, we have a normal and a hover. And instead of a selected state, we're using visited. So once you click anything, that is going to be visited. So you can't unvisit it on the slide. So the difference between this is we're not really toggling through objects like we did before. We're completing a series of tabs and we wanna show those completed tabs with that visited state. So it's all built into Storyline. So the properties, those little superpowers I talked about earlier, they're all part of, part of that, but that's already built in. But everything else is the same. We're using over here, right, triggers to show a new layer and each layer is gonna have its own content, right? So that's another example of the workflow. Tabs interactions, very useful, very practical. They do not have to look like tabs. It can pretty much look like anything, but what they do is they make it really easy to group and chunk related content on the slide without having to jump out or lose the moment or send learners off somewhere else. You can always view the navigation elements and then the content is loaded usually off to the side or above the tabs or some other place of where the available screen uh, spaces.